Maranatha, my PBC family and friends. Pastor Brian here with another quick bite, living the word. Today we're going to come from Acts chapter 2, and I want to share with us a, uh, some verses here real quickly, and then I want to come back and talk about these and why this is upon my heart this morning. Acts chapter 2, picking up verse 41, and we're going to read down for a bit here. Uh, let's go ahead and actually read down probably through verse 46, and we'll come back and talk about this. It says, Then they that gladly received his word were baptized, and the same day were added unto them about 3,000 souls. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. And fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. And all that believed were together and had all things in common, and sold their possessions and goods and parted them to all men as every man hath need. And they continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house did eat with meat, eat their meat with gladness and sing on the heart. Verse forty-seven, praising God and having favor with all people. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. Now, why why this is upon my heart this morning is really it's not. I mean, we understand this is the beginning of the the, the early church, the Church of Acts, the beginning of the church, how it happened, what happened there. Now, I'm not sitting here saying we have this communal living and things like this. But there's a couple of key things in here that I think we need to pick up on this morning and that are heavy upon my heart as of late. One, I want you to read verse 42 in particular with me, where it says this, and they continued steadfastly. In the apostles' doctrine. Okay, so first thing is this: when the church gets together, they're in the apostles' doctrine, right? Well, does that mean they're always open the Bible, reading and doing Bible studies like this? Well, yeah, sometimes they are, but sometimes look what it says: and fellowship. Notice how it separates those two things. Well, we fellowship around the Word of God, we fellowship about the Lord, but it's not always about opening up and doing this big long Bible study. Not that there's a problem with that, but sometimes we just get together to encourage one another, to exhort one another, to have. An opportunity to fellowship as it would be with one another. It says this and the breaking of bread and in prayers. So what's awesome about this, when we break this down, this is what I want you to really pick up on here. The early church understood how important it was to get together as believers, to fellowship together as believers. It's amazing to me how many brothers and sisters in Christ I've run into over the years and still continue to run into over the years who act like, well, getting together with the church is not that important. It's, you know, going out in nature and enjoying God's beauty and things like that. That's where my I find God. That's where I find the, the Lord and I, I get in touch with my Creator. And it's interesting to me, there's nothing matter with those things. But understand that the apostles and the early church understood the importance of fellowshipping together. Getting together to study the Word of God. Getting together to fellowship with one another. To encourage one another. To exhort one another as we read in the scriptures. All these things. Bearing one another's burdens. All these things that we can't do if we're not together to do them. So it's amazing how many of us just think that church is just about Sunday morning and just getting together whenever the church is together to study the doctrine or maybe even Wednesday nights for those who make that a priority. But ultimately, at the end of the day, it's every time the church is able to gather together, we should be willing to and desire to gather together. But at the very least, as often as we can gather together our brothers and sisters in Christ, we should have a desire to want to gather together the brothers and sisters in Christ. And why? So that we might be encouraged, that we might grow, as it says there, right? And one of the things I love about this is when it says this, Verse 46, and they continued daily with one accord in the temple. Well, how do you continue in one accord? Well, you have to be under this same, in, in, in that same fellowship and that same togetherness all the time. And that same, I know what's going on. I, I, I mean, I know where I need to be. I know, I know who I need to be with and things like this. In that one accord. In the temple, breaking bread, said it again, from house to house they went. They were, they, so it wasn't like they, they were all in one house. They went house to house doing these things, right? So they weren't necessarily like in this big commune. They were in their individual homes, but they were all gathering together as often as they possibly could. Sometimes in my house, sometimes in your house. But ultimately getting together as much as we could so we could actually have that fellowship, that growth. It's amazing to me how many people think that it's just, uh, well... You're just one of those people who's just crazy about getting together with brothers discretion, about fellowship and thinking that's all important and stuff like this. But ultimately, that's not, you know, I'm not. The Lord is. The early church was. The apostles were. So I hope this encourages you today just to think about that. Maybe you've been neglecting that getting together with your brothers and sisters in Christ, putting other things as a priority over those things. I understand life happens, guys. So I don't want to sit here and act like I'm casting stones. Life happens. Okay, we have sickness. We have illness. We have things that happen. But are you sometimes just making an excuse to not be in fellowship when you really should be. So I hope this is a crazy day. As always, remember, I love you, we love you, God loves you, and God's got this.